Um, so we'd just like to welcome everybody to this um, time together. We're really excited to be sharing uh, some information with you today on some of the ongoing trends in the marketplace and how those apply to us in, uh, in the industry of food service, um, as well as how we're applying those to our particular uh, brand strategy, existing and going forward. Um, we also are very excited to introduce you to our newest uh, members of our team. Uh, we've got Marla Rosen and Roberto Ramos here with us today, and they head up our branding and marketing department. And we have Josh Cooper with us, who heads up our R&D department, and he also oversees our production and supply. Um, so we want to give uh, Marla and Roberto and Josh a chance to introduce themselves to you all as well. So the floor is yours. Marla. Hi, everybody. I'm Marla. Um, I work with the Idea Atelier and Roberto on branding and marketing. Um, I live in California right now, so I'm in Northern California, just north of San Francisco. Um, it's been fantastic working with um, Sarah and Jen so far in Cremaluso. And um, we've done really fun things so far and we're looking forward to the future. It's gonna be um, an exciting time going forward. And um, we're looking forward for you to see what we do. So thank you for joining us. Thank you, Marla. Josh? Welcome and good morning to everybody. I'm Josh Cooper. I live in, uh, right now, the sunny state of Connecticut, believe it or not with um, working on the Cremoloso brand, uh, trying to get uh, production smooth with um, all aspects of the technical end of things. Uh, been blessed and honored to work with both Jennifer and Sarah, who have been terrific and supportive in, in every which way for all of us as a team. I, I, I truly feel that you're gonna be introduced to an entire team today with one focus and one goal to get Cremoloso to be the best brand it possibly can be. So I'm honored to be here. I'm glad that you're here and uh, let the show begin. Perfect. Thank you, Josh and Marla and I'm Roberto Ramos. Um, pleasure, piacere. Um, my background is from the branding innovation side of things. I, I own a, a boutique branding agency called Idea Atelier, and we were honored to, to be partners with uh, Crema Luso to, to really take this disruptive um, product to, to new heights. Uh, my, I've been lucky in my life to, to work with great brands like LVMH, Apple with Unilever, Procter & Gamble, but what really always inspires me most is the opportunity to take a brand at the cusp and take it to the next level. So. Um, that that's really the the journey that we're embarking on and we think the fundamentals are are incredibly strong with this whole uh focus individuals wanting to taste the best of life this idea of shelf stability and safe and this premise of safe delight is, is really um a huge space that that we see and what we're doing today is is something that we're starting to do a lot more for the brand which is uh, the best brands have at their core a philosophy a point of view to guide us through moments, both good and bad. And I think at this moment in time, we're all looking for guidance, we're all looking for comfort, we're all looking for delight. So we're taking this um, idea of thought leadership, of our uh, focus and trends, what we see consumers wanting, and, and we're literally using this as our tool to engage with our potential partners, with our potential um, clients. Um, so two weeks ago, or was it a week ago? It's hard to keep track of time this day and age with, with COVID-19, we had our first webinar, very well attended, high engagement, and we're doing this throughout uh, the summer, we're doing newsletters, so we're, we're very excited personally and, and with Marla to, to be partners with uh, the dynamic duo of, of Sarah and Jen. So I'll pass it over to them now. Thank you, the dynamic duo. <laughs> <laughs> El duo dinamico. <laughs> <laughs> exacto. <laughs> um, yeah, so today we are excited to share with you some, uh, like I said, some of the mega trends that we're seeing <clears throat> that are taking place in the face of COVID-19. And uh, Marla and Roberto are uh, obviously very much experts in the field of trends as they work um, in helping 
various brands to not only come to market and grow, but to empower those brands and to help those brands further develop their stories, um, further develop their creativity, uh, and to further strategize how they are going to position themselves as a unique and powerful entity within the marketplace. Uh, so today, uh, Marla and Roberto, as well as Josh, are going to be walking us through uh, some of these trends and helping us to see this through the lens of a food and beverage company such as ourselves. We know how important it is to understand consumer trends, uh, especially during this time. And uh, we're excited to um, begin to further strategize how we can apply these trends as keys to our ongoing success. Excellent. Um, and separately, you've received the brand presentation, but uh, you know, you've seen the logo. We're, we're definitely running with this idea of elevated romance, uh, Italian provenance, and, you know, inspired by, by our goddess, Sarah, and, and, and she's helping us right in some of the forecasting side of things and, and to make sense of, 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 uh, of the future and, and, and reading the tea leaves of sorts. So as Sarah and Jen mentioned, um, the goal with this presentation is really taking stock. Um, obviously, COVID-19 has hit the brakes in many aspects of our everyday lives. While really the effects are yet to be fully realized, but what we do know is that there will be a normal. I think someone else just joined. Let me make sure I'm letting them in. Um, so Sandra just joined. Oh, great. Buongiorno, Sandra. There's one waiting, but I guess it says that she's joining. Um, I don't know if connectivity is an issue for her, her the speed, because it seems to be spooling. Does it show that she's still connecting to audio? It, it's, it's her status is, it says joining. Okay. Okay, I'll proceed. And, but in the meantime, if, if you have access to her on WhatsApp or let mm -hmm. me know if, uh, if I need to do anything. Um, but really, so the, the goal is in this forward state presentation, highlighting what change will look like uh, with a focus on the food industry and how a mindset of collaboration, innovation, and reset will emerge. Um, they say scarcity, they say, um, um, you know, uh, these types of moments call out for superheroes, call out for new ways of doing things. So this is a moment where we need to kind of like rethink, reset, and, and explore um, perhaps things that we did not explore um, before. Uh, hold on. Is everyone there? Yeah. We're here. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see the slide just sort of rose. Hold on. When we talk about the new normal being full of uncertainty and challenges and <laughs> <laughs> technology plays a role in that as well. Um, so in this presentation, we're going to look at uh, six main shifts that we're seeing. And these shifts are really an agglomeration of, of um, social, cultural, business, um, and that have you know, implications in terms of how consumers feel, how consumers expect to be engaged, um, how consumers um, will shop, et cetera. So the shift that we're seeing, uh, the first one is back to the core. So this return to simplicity, this return to things that give them a sense of comfort. And the second will be the power of community building. And, and, and we've seen the power of this. I think we've all seen those videos in YouTube of the Neapolitan uh, tenants in their balconies, you know, singing, uh, you know, beautiful songs. And as New Yorkers, we, we kind of like borrowed that idea. And every day at 7 p.m., um, there's that, uh, the, the singing, the, the applause for um, the first responders, the, the nurses, you know, the, the doctors. Coming from all of this, we know we need to be much more pragmatic uh, in terms of how we spend, in terms of how we organize, in terms of the focus on safety. So this new form of pragmatism will be with us going forward. Um, and But because of all this different level of stress and anxiety, the individual will need a balance. So this idea of self-love is, is one of the states that we're looking at as well. And then as we get, hopefully, more comfort 
and more confident, uh, we'll be looking to venture out again. But how we venture and, and, and will be different. So this idea of venture state of, of, of really seeking um, new experiences. And um, from this also we feel will come this sense of euphoria. <laughs> um, it's, uh, this is a form of cabin fever. You've been locked inside a house for so long when you come out the first time you can actually go to a restaurant and and enjoy life with other people, that will be very, very special. A lot of it will be different, but certainly special, a lot of built up uh, emotions. And we're starting to see that come to life visually, um, digitally um, already. So what we're looking at is really this whole premise of a great restart. As the restaurant industry faces unprecedented challenges, we see the rise of new home cooking, comfort and safety. Um, as a brand that is, thinking and was imagined at first to help that food service industry, we, we have great pieces of insights and wisdom to help those restaurants get back on their feet to embrace the new normal, a new normal that will, um, that will place a big importance on, on safety. But we also know that these restaurants, these potential and existing clients will need to find a way of connecting more and more with the end consumer at, their, at the home, given that they're be cooking more, et cetera. So we also want to show them how to do that, how to cultivate a relationship and, and, and build that sense of community with them. So while business is reset to help out local communities, becoming a means of giving back, food cooking and eating become more meaningful than ever. So what we're doing in terms of our focus on food is, is spot on in terms of what culture needs, in terms of what commerce needs. We just have to be nimble, flexible to um, address and, and morph into the new ways in which this is it's happening and it's, it's, it's happening at home, um, you know, right now. So what is the role for, for food? Obviously, full has a primordial role for all of us. Um, it, you know, gives us sustenance, it gives us joy, it gives us um, connection. Uh, but we, we've seen the food play out in, in many different ways. There's obviously the, the, the urgent um, issue with food, the food emergency that we've been having. Um, in the States and other parts of the world with food banks um, running low, with all of us feeling first and foremost, the, the pandemic, um, uh, you know, besides obviously those individuals that have uh, loved ones suffering it, but for, for most of us, it was going to the supermarket and seeing um, areas completely depleted um, as well. So from this comes this need, this opening for um, culinary heroes, NGOs and chefs stepping into the light light into the spotlight. We also see the role of food as therapy, um, this idea of uh, celebrities doing the, you know, cocktails. Uh, baking itself extraordinarily has really taken over the conversation. Um, you know, baking and uh, reminds us of, of being little and, 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 and cooking with our, with our nona, with our grandparents, with our, with, with, with our mom. So quarantine baking has really been trending in social media. So this is just a reminder that the space that we're in is a space that is very loaded emotionally and that has a, a commercial um, implication as well. So what we'll do first, um, we're gonna focus on the first chapter, which is we call Back to the Core. So Back to the Core is this premise of uh, as consumer shelter in place, they stay at, at home around the world. And I think this is the first time where everybody's in this together, you know, this experience where we're all going through this. The home and the kitchen have become a place to de-stress and, and, and connect. In the States, and we know definitely in Italy, the kitchen has always been this communal place of inspiration, of family. Even our home designs, the way we build homes in the past 20 years has completely changed where the biggest space, real estate goes into the kitchen. But now more than ever with our immediate family, but this idea of an extended kitchen, you know, with our friends uh, and family. So we see Zoom gathering, family recipes passed back and forth via social media and the return to slow cooking and comfort food. So baking really makes a resurgence. So this idea of spending time at home. So these were some of the most powerful hashtags that came from, from all of this. Alone together, stay home and work from home life. Um, and here a little bit of you know, tidbits, anecdotes, um, a quote, I've been making recipes I'm very familiar and comfortable with and I find it comforting to make and eat foods I've made it my whole life hundreds of times. It gives me a sense of normalcy. That's what food can do. Um, in certain surveys, you know, a third of those polled plan to make more home-cooked meals after the virus, um, you know, passes. 
I'm the, my wife and I are the, the parents of a five-year-old and a, and a three-year-old, and we were commenting that our five-year-old boy, you know, obviously he's going through growth skirts, so the past year he was very skinny, and in the, during the, this pandemic, you know, with the, the pasta and the steaks and the desserts and everything, he, he's put on weight, so, uh, um, so uh, this, this idea of, like, realizing, hey, this, this, this maybe should be the, the way in which we, we do things a little bit more, finding that, that better balance, so that, that resetting uh, that balance um, is, is something that, that consumers and, and, and communities are reacting to. Baking specifically, as I said before, 33% of consumers are baking more than they typically do. And um, in the US and the UK, almost 50% of consumers have been increasing their grocery shopping um, since the, the outbreak. So what are we seeing? We're seeing um, uh, the popularity, the need to just build a home that, that is much more multifunctional. The home is a place of work. The home is a place for cooking, for eating, for dining, but it's, it's also a place for inspiration. It's a place for wellness. And we believe there's a, a role for us in that. So we see brands like Rooted. Um, it's pretty cool. So in essence, you create your own indoor jungle and you bring the outdoors inside. We have brands like Peacework um, here in the States. They do these fun um, um, puzzles, relaxing puzzles. So they've been gaining popularity. And of course, the Zoomification of everything, whether it be Zoomification of yoga classes, of cooking, et cetera. And this idea of home brands capitalizing with comfort food tips. So some of the examples that we're seeing in terms of the return to the core is uh, the focus on natural remedies, the focus on things that, that, that just feel um, traditional. Um, this trend of community books, of, of, of group, um, groups of trusted friends and family sharing recipes and, and building digital versions of, of those books as well. Um, and then just this whole great baking revival. Um, in March, over 26,000 posts uh, were related to stress baking. And then quarantine baking had almost 12,000. Um, we've joked in the following um, anecdote, if you take the word stress and you put it backwards it actually says dessert so stress um uh, backwards is dessert so that there's definitely a place where baking and dessert comes in to to make us feel um happy joyful and and satisfied um at times in which we we need it the most and speaking of that here's some yumminess your way <laughs> so this is one of the uh we have had a lot of fun creating recipes uh, with Cremaluso, and uh, our newest uh, adventure is the baking arena, and this is one of the newest uh, recipes on the baking format side, uh, and this is called lemon curd clotted cream scones. So this is actually utilizing the Cremaluso product three ways. We, we turn it into a lovely uh, gelato soft serve, as you see on the top, um, top slide there. We also use it in the baking element of the scone. So the cremaluso replaces the wet ingredients and the sugar ingredients uh, to create the scones. And then we also use it um, to create the, the sauce itself. So this, is, this was a really huge success when we um, developed this. We actually served it at a gala dinner for one of our strategic partners, uh, for some shareholders uh, of that strategic partner, and they really enjoyed it. And it's fun, and it's whimsical, and it's tasty. And it really gave us the opportunity to demonstrate the versatility of the Cremaluso product. So we have these questions um, that we ask ourselves as business owners specifically as business owners, you know, within the food service industry or even for each of you uh, as owners of your own business, questions that you can ask yourself during this time that will help to hopefully give you some guidance on how to navigate uh, the, um, the environment right now as we are in the face of um, an unprecedented time. Uh, so one of those questions would be, what is your brand's superpower? And how can you deliver trust and guidance during these changing times? One of the things that we've uh, realized is a superpower of ours, uh, of the Cremaluso brand, is that we help customers to become more independent, better versions of themselves, to be able-minded, and to be confident. 
Uh, and we really believe that as we emerge from this crisis, our customers are going to appreciate brands like Cremaluso, uh, who have remained present and who have supported them through the midst of this crisis. Mm -hmm. So where historically our primary focus has been the food service operator, um, the, the food service chef, we now find ourselves having to, um, uh, to step outside of the box and focus also on reaching the home cook. Um, so now we are, rather than waiting for the chefs to come to us to um, express an interest in our product and in our brand, we are finding new strategic pathways to reach those professional chefs at home and also to reach the home chefs. Um, so actually uh, developing a direct to consumer reach as well. Yeah, and so other questions that we are asking and we're running a little behind, so we'll just give you time to ponder um, these additional questions, but we're considering these same questions as we continue to, to develop uh, our brand strategy going forward and how to uh, confront this new climate and how to really embrace um, what, what this new normal means. So how are you tapping into uh, the loyalty of your customer base? Um, what is your great baking innovation? Um, and then obviously taking time to really share your brand story because people right now want to feel involved and embraced uh, more than ever. Um, and uh, to feel that, you know, there's collaboration happening uh, within the community to bring new joy uh, back into daily life, even in uh, a climate of isolation, perhaps, but that people can find joy in baking and through um, through culinary arts and desserts and the like, people seem to be finding joy and we want to participate in that alongside them. Great. Uh, the second story that we're looking at is this idea of community building and different ways in which we're building communities. We're seeing this uh, across different industries, whether it be virtual dating, for instance, um, really expanding. Uh, in March, uh, Quarantine Together emerged as a new dating platform amidst the lockdown. The idea of these messaging rooms, so Facebook launched that and 700 million people are now making calls on FB Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp daily. I know that I have like five different WhatsApp groups, whether it be my friends from, from college, you know, my family that's around the world, including Italy and La uh, Pizza Italiana, you know. So we have all these ways of, of, of more closely staying in touch and sharing things and, and passion projects. So that sense of community is definitely something that we, that we are building with Crema Lusso, including with our trade, and hence the reason why we're doing these panels and webinars and conversations and Zoom video conferencing um, going from 10 million users in December to more than 300 million users today. How I would have liked to have been an early investor in, in Zoom. Um, and this shift, communities that continue to come together during the slow return to our new normal. We expect to see Carlos Street, um, and we see it already, new bike sharing programs and an updated expression of urban planning. I don't know if you saw um, some of the, um, the headlines yesterday around the, some of the ozone depletion levels going down for the first time. None of the, the models we had put into place had contemplated you know, this sort of massive stop halt to our day-to-day -day lives. So maybe we should do this more often, but without the pandemic and just in terms of a, a more balanced um, take on life. And that, that's the type of thing consumers are thinking about. Rural towns will see an influx of urban um, urbanites relocating to so moving um, to the country to smaller towns. So um, this will create an appreciation of uh, local communities of ingredients. Um, travel will be limited, but travel will be more local. So I think we'll all get to see the areas, the cities, the countryside closer to us as well. So coming from this is this idea of virtual communities of digital dining, we're seeing that as well. So as I mentioned, um, some of the popular activities, bike sharing, personalization, returning, we see there's a coffee chain here in the States called Blue Bottle Coffee, and they do these fun um, quizzes and surveys to see what sort of coffee drinker are you. It's almost like a personality astrology kind of thing. Um, and really sharing, expanding um, 
across the board. Some examples, some brands here. Um, um, IGTV is um, is a channel that's focused on the home, so they're doing digital dining uh, uh, experiences. Um, there's the rise of subscription as it pertains to food, and that making a comeback. So, a brand like Wink, and then they deliver personalized wines for somewhat younger um, consumer, and things that feel retro, that feel vintage, that feel like you know comfort food or even the aesthetics, the graphics look like something out of the 80s, the 90s, the 70s, but imbued with something new, imbued with new flavors, imbued with new functionalities. In our case, obviously, you know, shelf stability and all these things we, we know are resonating and resonate more going forward. We have another yummy recipe. Okay, forse spiegare in italiano. No, my Terry, <laughs> Terry here, so she speaks only English, so we have to stay English. <laughs> So another fun recipe, you know, people want, like I said, to feel involved, to feel included, um, and to feel like there is community and connection happening, even right now when everyone feels very separated and divided, and maybe even a little afraid. Um, so <laughs> we wanted to bring something from home, from Italy, to our customers and um, give them something fun and messy uh, to play around with. So we created this supercharged donut hole pasticcio. And uh, as we all know, um, and I think Terry, maybe we've even made it for you, I don't know, but um, pasticcio is kind of like a lasagna, but this beautiful kind of messy, gorgeous, ooey gooey, cheesy, beautiful, saucy uh, <laughs> thing on your plate. <laughs> and we thought, you know, it's wonderful when it's savory and salty and tomatoey and delicious, but wouldn't it be wonderful also in a sweet version? So we've taken crema lusso and we've turned it into a sweet cream gelato and we layer it with fresh donut holes. If you don't know what donut holes are, uh, I don't know if I've ever seen them in Italy, but the, the ciambella, the, the uh, donut, you take the center part and you um, take that out and you deep fry it and do all kinds of crazy stuff with it. So we layered a bunch of those um, with the gelato and with decadent uh, Ghirardelli chocolate sauce. And on top, you'll see that we put cacao and we put um, espresso beans. And so it's just a really lovely and fun and somewhat messy pasticcio dessert. <laughs> <laughs> So, so some questions we can ask ourselves um, are, what are the conversations that your brand and you curate? And who should be a part of that conversation? Who should you be partnering with uh, to show your sense of purpose and to highlight uh, the, the innovative um, aspect of your product and your brand? Um, how are you creating safe spaces for your consumer, both physically and digitally? Obviously, this is extremely important right now when everyone's feeling a little unsafe, a little unsure, a little insecure, especially around food insecurity. So how can we help to highlight the safety element of our product? Um, how are you contributing to creating a positive impact? And, you know, I just quickly would like to focus on question number two, how are you partnering or who should you be partnering with to show your sense of purpose and to highlight innovation? So as you all know, we have been partnering strongly with ingredients brands as well as uh, equipment makers. Uh, for example, Ghirardelli on the ingredient side, Carpigiani and Taylor Freezers um, are two of our strongest equipment partners. Um, but here's another innovative strategy. What if you were to partner with someone who is com completely uh, in a completely different sector um, so that the two of you can work together to open up pathways to new customers that you would never have interacted with um, for, by chance um, and to open up new revenue streams for both companies. So you're working together to mutually benefit the, uh, the growth uh, of each other's companies while also crossing into a whole new consumer base. And, and uh, on top of that, when you co-brand and you work with someone who is in a different sector than you, this is really where uh, innovative ideas and unique partnerships begin to be born and can flourish. Did 
Did I go through all of them? I did. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. The next chapter we're looking at is something we call new pragmatism. Again, um, with the challenge that we've all been facing, having to do so much more with so much less, whether it be in terms of time, whether it be in terms of space, whether it be in terms of ingredients and, 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 and resources, we've learned that there, there's a smarter way that has to be simpler, that has to be more pragmatic. And the first and most important lens that we're um, employing, deploying to do this exercise is safety. So consumers will adopt the safety first mentality when it comes to their lifestyle as we see wallets tighten and a practical approach is adopted. There's an urban shift towards self-sufficiency, finding inspiration in 20th century modes of reusing and recycling. So the whole um, sustainable, practical, uh, environmentally friendly way of thinking will, will hopefully um, continue. Diets themselves will get a sustainable makeover and you'll, you'll see some of the manifestations we're seeing in terms of plant-based, um, et cetera, which are obviously innovation um, um, elements that we're thinking of for Crema Luso as well. So safety first, pragmatic, go green and, and healthy living. So a couple of quotes here. It's definitely becoming less about meat and more about health. We're now using a lot of different grains besides just quinoa and bulgur. There's a huge demand for it. Um, that's uh, Chef Lefebvre. And so again, this, this idea of expanding one's horizons 40% of those restaurants survey think they plan to focus more on saving and budgeting their money after the coronavirus spread passes, says the consumer. 45% of consumers say they're currently eating less fast food than they normally do. And that's because they're obviously eating and at home. But, but that mindset, I think, will, you know, will prevail. And across the U.S., um, between March 12 and 15, online grocery orders were up by 150%. And primarily, the approach is there is shelf-stable and long-lasting goods. So we want to ride on that momentum and, and that um, fundamental shift going forward. And, and hence, you know, the reason why we're investing in thought leadership, et cetera, to make sure that the industry sees this as a source um, you know, for this. So what are we seeing? Contactless solutions, a lot of innovations in terms of how do you deliver delight and experience without touching. So in terms of robotics, in terms of self-serve and, and, and things of that nature. Social distancing will be thought of throughout in terms of the entire journey, in terms of how restaurants uh, um, you know, design, in terms of more mobile experiences, you know, the idea of food trucks, for instance, becoming more popular where people can wait outside without putting a burden on a physical um, space. And, and some of these trends that we're seeing, again, this touchless economy, this idea of a ghost kitchen, um, uh, this premise of back to basics, um, brands like Land Lake focusing on, on, on farmers and, and, and just the degree of, of really safe quality coming from a trusted sort of place. Trust, trust is very, very important. Um, and then also just the fundamentals. This has been a time in which those categories and we never really thought about the essentials um, have now taken center stage. So the essentials now will also take the center stage in terms of design, in terms of branding. So we see a brand like material that's creating cookware that's beautiful, but it's also cheap. It's, 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 it's accessible. So we see ourselves as, a, as an essential brand for that um, creator, chef. Um, so questions to explore uh, in that context, thank you, Roberto, would be, um, for example, how are you tailoring uh, your offering to enhance the health and wellness of your consumer base? Even being a dessert product, how can you speak to the needs of uh, and concerns around health and safety? Um, what is that, that next generation innovation uh, from experience to ingredients that you can provide uh, for your, these upcoming audiences that will be uh, exposed to your product and your brand? Um, how are you using new technology to improve the safety and healthy measures of your, of your business? And finally, as industries begin to reset, um, we need to keep an eye on consumer habits as they shift away from food as usual uh, into this new normal and we need to be ready and prepared uh, to meet this change head on and uh, with empathy. So in regard to um, 
using new, new technology, I think technology really is a very high aspect of what we're doing with Cremeluso and uh, extremely important. Yes, yeah, so a septic technology, um, especially during this time, you know, we're, we're looking at um, the, the consumer demands for full disclosure, food safety, uh, et cetera. And so during this time, we're able to um, stand on the guarantee that our product is very safe, very sterile. Um, we are very transparent about what ingredients go into the product. So um, transparent about that we, uh, we, we put a lot of protocols in place to ensure that we use the highest quality ingredients that we do not use uh, synthetic ingredients, et cetera. Um, as well as that the, the aseptic packaging and processing uh, process of, of, of manufacturing our product, um, our product is never exposed to the external environment during the stage of production. So from, from production through to packaging, there's no possibility that the product comes into any, um, uh, that, that it can be exposed to any bacterial load. Uh, so this is great. This is really important in the era of in, an increased desire for safety, and that's going to continue to increase as we come out of COVID-19. Absolutely. The next chapter, a very important one, uh, again, as we tackle so many elements that are stressful in our day-to-day -day lives, is this idea of, of self-love, of indulgence. So self-love evolves to make, become moments of much needed indulgence and pampering, a moment to turn off the news, a few seconds of being out of touch. So this is a place that where we can play in as well. You know, just really the, the, the beauty, the delight of a, of a dessert, of a treat, of a, of a new form of guilty pleasure or not so guilty. So this need will find comfort in all things sensual as candles, oils, and rich flavors replace yesterday's cosmetic demands. So in essence, this idea of a, of a home spa of a at-home pastry shop um, um, and, and bringing this to life. Um, and this is needed because people are social organisms and millions of years of evolution have wired us not to be isolated or on our own. So we're finding all these ways of building communities, but we're finding all these ways of now bringing pampering into the home, into our kitchens. Um, this is an interesting quote. Continuing to make things with my hands has been my most vital tool for preserving my well-being. And we know for a fact that baking, that cooking has a meditative, has a healing, has a, has a, a joyful sort of element. Um, and of course, it has a connective element when you're cooking for someone else. And in this day and age of social and people sharing their recipes, and that's something that we're starting to be you know, part of, it's part of something greater as well. So this idea of getting away, of escaping, um, we see it across the board. Bench watching, this you know, extreme watching of television has, has also increased, not surprisingly. So Netflix has n now more than almost close to 200 million global c customers, adding 15 million just during the, the period of the quarantine, you know, the, the past couple of months. So how we're seeing this, we're seeing this in the rise of hemp infused products, all things related to scent, uh, candles, uh, work from home fashion, so fashion now to work that is, um, that is much more comfortable, that is, um, that is warmer, that is uh, multifunctional, and really the rights of remote playful modes of communication, even how we're talking to each other, emoji and all these different types of things will rise even um, more. Um, some examples here of how this premise of self-love is coming to life, the idea of flowers. So this is an artisanal baker Natasha Saadi that, that brings in flowers into her, her process. Um, familiar comfort. So restaurants are selling their fan favorites in bulk, selling them to restaurants, you know, direct to consumer. So they can have that loved experience from their restaurants at, at home. Um, dialing up the, the beauty of, of ingredients and, and, you know, talking about food ingredients as though they're they're, they're a perfume and then, you know, there's this delicacy uh, of sorts and, and, and so letting them savor everything. I think by um, disclosing, unpacking all the different notes, um, they feel a sense of discovery, a, a, a sense of satisfaction. And that for us creates a huge window of opportunity in terms of making our recipes available online, in terms of social media, et cetera. 
So this is one recipe that we definitely want to try. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so, you know, we've really taken, uh, you know, this uh, formula that started out as just a gelato mix, liquid ready to use, and we've transformed it as, as we ourselves have transformed, as the brand has transformed. And I think what people are most excited about, about Crema Luso, is that it is a liquid mix that can be used to make gelato, but you can also make soft serve, milkshakes, hot chocolate, uh, and baked items. You're, the sky's the limit with Crema Luso, basically. And that's what people are really excited about because there's no other product like this available uh, currently on the market. And so people are really standing uh, up and taking notice. One of the uh, fun creations that we have begun doing when we are um, presenting Crema Luso at you know, high-end events or corporate events or uh, at trade events is surprising people with a gelato cocktail. Uh, so everyone loves cocktails, and we know that during COVID, um, alcohol sales have gone through the, <laughs> through the roof. Um, this is a, a fun twist on, on a cocktail, uh, because you may, may as well have some gelato in it. It's just better that way. <laughs> the best of both wor worlds, alcohol and gelato. <laughs> <laughs> so some questions to ask. In the wake of social distancing, how can your brand deliver delight? As, as uh, Roberto was, was talking about, how can we allow our customers to continue to experience the delight of life um, and the delight of our particular brand and product even while they're stuck indoors under lockdown? Hmm. What new wellness partners can you collaborate with? That's an interesting question. Um, think of the new performance or wellness possibilities of certain key ingredients uh, within your particular product. The next chapter is something we call Venture State. And this idea of we've been in lockdown mode for, for a long time. So we want to explore, we want to see things. Uh, obviously, we'll be limited in terms of travel for the considerable amount of time. A lot of it will have to be local, but also a lot of it will have to be through the power of imagination, through the power of technology, through the power of, of storytelling, through the power of, of imagination around things such as the cosmos, et cetera. So we're starting to see a lot of um, strong interest that had been building up already, but even more so. So with travel and adventure off the table for much of this year already, consumers will turn to futurism, to tech, to space, and extreme adventure for inspiration. Off the grid, so getting out of the cities, walking to the country, the beaten path, that sensibility, that sense of, um, of being almost like a forester, of like an adventurer, a warrior, will, will really take hold. So watch for the emergence of foraging, of stockpiling, of this idea of cabin life, camping, and a renewed outdoor and survivalist uh, movement. Um, so we see this as, for instance, foraging um, really becoming um, a popular activity, the use of ingredients that feel a little bit more raw, that feel a little bit more unstructured, that feel a little bit more um, just found. Even we're starting to see it even from the visual world right now, almost like this premise of former Italian, like arte povera, you know, that, that whole premise visually coming to life uh, as well. 50% uh, of travel plans in 2020 have been voluntarily canceled. Um, so this will further accelerate that. And then the global robotics, robotics market is really ex expected to attain a value of, of almost 150 billion. So what this will do in terms of delivery, but what they will, this will do in terms of immersive technologies, AI, so that we can put on our headsets and, and see other worlds and, and travel you know, through that angle. So as a brand that is delivering more than a product, we're delivering an experience. We're also thinking of ways in which we can, we can do this. So how are we seeing this? Um, brands like Airbnb that depended obviously on a, on a physical form of exchange, now doing experiences, letting consumers travel with hosts from the comfort of their home. So you might not be there to fully appreciate it, but you still are appreciative and hungry for learning about a culture. And that creates um, opportunities to then sell products. So from our angle, it's how do we tell a, a story of provenance around Italy, since people may or may not be comfortable uh, traveling to Italy anytime soon. Hopefully they, they will, because we, we know tourism is a, is a big part of the economy. 
but by telling stories of recipes, by telling stories of craftsmanship, of stories of cities, then will whet the palate, the appetite to then transact and buy products that are Italian made, that are Italian inspired. And in our case, you know, with, with Italian culture at, at the heart of, of, of the brand. We also expect to see survivalists and protect the fashion this fall, extreme sports finding their way into marketing appeal, high tech urban transport providing new forms of, of safety. So this idea of a robotic future, um, I think there are a lot of really cool things that can come from that in terms of self-serving stations, um, et cetera. Um, and then that leads, that frees up a human interaction for something that, that's maybe even a little bit more meaningful in terms of how they greet you, in terms of lessons they provide. Um, so the contactless thing might not, doesn't necessarily mean a complete removal of the individual on the, on the service side, but can give them a role that it's safer for, for both parties, but also just maybe a little bit more creative this idea of foraging that I was mentioning. And then what we were talking about before, um, ingredients that have benefit. In this case, uh, we see a brand like UNU all about making hydration much more um, fun. So from this chapter, um, these are some of the questions that we, that we have. So how are you delivering the thrill of discovery in this new normal? What exotic and foreign destinations could serve as inspiration for your brand? think of innovative ways of pushing uh, innovation menus um, as Roberto um, so uh, wonderfully expressed. Mm -hmm. We are obviously using uh, the opportunity to to show Italy um, as uh, you know to show the Italianness of our product, the artisan uh, uh, aspect of our product mm -hmm. and and demonstrating this through fun and unique recipe sharing and so on. Um, and long, li live online demonstrations, et cetera. How could you be inspired by non-traditional elements such as the deep sea, the cosmos, and imagination? Great, and then the final story is, it's a fun story. This is a party uh, story. This is one where all those cocktails come in, it's euphoria. I think we, we, we've all been feeling like this uh, when every day feels like Tuesday. <laughs> when will a true weekend come, right? <laughs> um, so the shift, uh, it's a much needed return to play, fun, escapism, and nostalgia will follow the reopening of our culture. Clearly there will not be an immediate return to normal, but there will be a return to all things pop and, 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 and decadent and indulgent, uh, et cetera. And we're starting to see some of that even amidst, you know, we're, we're still somewhat in, in the middle of the, of the crisis. So memes, spoofs, and a sense of Generation Z humor will dominate the landscape. Um, so across the world, the, the success of Netflix's Tiger King, watched by almost 40 million uh, people, they announced that they're making a scripted version of that with Nicolas Cage, will be playing him. <laughs> um, and that almost 40 million people in just 10 days of release in, in, in the US. US sales of alcoholic beverages um, have risen close to 60% in the week ending March 21st, with spirits jumping 75% year on year. And above all, consumers just really looking for this escape positive way of seeing things. So they're looking to find the humor, the rise of indulgent desserts and drinks. So um, a lot of the recipes that we're sharing, I think, can, you know, definitely play in, in, into that mindset. This idea of escapism and nostalgia. And then music. We're seeing all these parties online and, and, and what they call uh, safe clubbing, which is you know, from your house from these young kids they're they're making their cocktails putting music and just uh you know dancing and and, and they're these tools where while you're dancing uh, your computer recognizes your hand movements and you're creating art at the same time so again it's just approaching different ways i'm i'm sure those parents are tickled to have a, a rave in their bedroom right next to them <laughs> uh but again just how we're seeing things in a much different angle um so that novelty um that search for uniqueness and we definitely see that across the board from the consumer also from the trade and that's why we feel so confident in our product that we're going in with something that is different but also very timely um, that pineapple is a, a new um, refreshed kind of like drink called Mina and they, they're calling it a mix between a tea and sparkling water we're seeing creative mashups, such as what the Tate Modern did right before the, the, the pandemic, their menu inspired by, by Warhol, uh, coinciding with that exhibit, and then pop-up groceries, et cetera. So rethinking your distribution um, 
model as well. So we know we're running a teensy bit over time, but hopefully um, you can all stick around for a couple more minutes. Um, we're almost finished here, but we would love to share with you another fun uh, cocktail, gelato cocktail. Um, this is another cocktail that we created for uh, an event with uh, one of our strategic partners slash customers. Um, and this was a, an elevated creamsicle gelato cocktail. Uh, we, what kind of gelato did we use here? Was it just vanilla? Uh, it was vanilla. So it was a vanilla gelato. We turned the crema luso into a vanilla gelato. And then we layered that with Grand Marnier, uh, sparkling orange Perrier. And we topped it with a, a and, and we put fresh orange juice as well. Um, and we topped it with a flambéed marshmallow and a dried persimmon. And people just went crazy for it. Yeah, we couldn't make them fast enough. This was a, a big event with a culinary uh, institute in uh, the prestigious Monterey Bay area. And I mean, our table was slammed. We could not get those out fast enough. People really, really enjoyed it because it's something whimsical. It's something delightful. Indulgent. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's an... I think we're seeing, Roberto, that the trends are shifting in that direction, that people are really just wanting to, um, to find a way to, to celebrate life right now. And, uh, Absolutely. And help, let's help so, them do that. <laughs> I, I definitely need to try this one. <laughs> <laughs> so some further questions we can ask ourselves. <clears throat> think of how your brand and your culinary experience, uh, think of how your brand and your culinary experience could be an entertainment platform. Mm. Um, how are you delivering fun, especially in the midst of, you know, lockdown? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As cooking returns to the home, make sure that you're creating tie-ins to mainstream creative culture. And how can you bring the entertainment factor into your product, process, or restaurant? This is mine. <laughs> so, um, so in summary, um, we want you, we want our strategic partners, we want our customers to tap into their sense of purpose. Everybody can live in purpose even during this time, uh, even while we're, some of us are functioning in a lower gear. Uh, some of our customers are struggling to remain open and relevant and present. Uh, they, we want to encourage a sense of purpose. Uh, think about safety, trust, and ways to deliver a safe and inspired space. Safety, trust, and ways to deliver a safe and inspired space. Find more immersive ways to show your story. How can you continue to deliver delight? Think of yourself as an entertainment brand. Foster a sense of community, very mm -hmm. important during this time. Um, embrace the new normal as a trigger for innovation and leadership. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and when in doubt, lead with creative empathy. So uh, Ho Jose Andreas, uh, obviously the famous chef, says without empathy, nothing works. Uh, and it's absolutely true. Uh, even we as a food and beverage company need to be um, certainly empathetic with uh, what's going on in our communities, with how our customers and partners are uh, facing those challenges. We should always be looking to better understand our consumer and what our consumer is looking for. Um, listening to our consumer, I think, is the most important part. If we continue to listen, if we continue to empathize, uh, we can continue to implement solutions for our customers. And this is what it means to be a smart business. So we want to thank you all for joining. We want to thank you for sticking around for a few extra minutes. And uh, we also want to thank Marla and Roberto and jo Josh for jumping on and helping us to co-host and, and walk you through this presentation today. If you have questions um, and, and you want to stick around now, we can, of course, go through some questions and answers. Or, of course, as always, we're available to be reached through email, through phone to continue the conversation as well. Thank you guys. Thank you for the very beautiful and, and 
clean, clear uh, presentation. It was very well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So yeah, a lot of change, a lot of newness happening. A lot to digest, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And listen, I would encourage all of you, like I said, a lot to process here, but any questions, please let us know. Any ideas um, that you wanna share, um, let us know because we're, we're taking on everything that we can right now and trying to uh, implement, um, you know, feedback and all of that is very important right now so okay we will thank you thank you everyone thanks everybody have a great thank, thank you thank you very thank much you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a <laughs> ciao everyone bye 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 bye, -bye.